one of the things that is mamash the satan be'atzmo. It's mamash the satan himself in many, many homes. Jews, non-Jews, religious, non-religious is the internet. Internet. Internet itself is literally the Satan himself. Why? On one end, we all need it. You need it for work. You need it to function. You can't function without internet in today's world. It's just a reality. Internet on a computer, internet on your phone, internet here, internet there. You need it. You need it. If you have a business, Unless you live in, I don't know, in Mongolia, you need the internet. You need to advertise, you need to get customers, you need to do a lot of things on the internet. In reality today, if there's no internet, there's no business. It's not like the old days where people drive around until they find a shop. People look at their phone, do, 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 do. I need a car shop? Oh, okay, over here, I'm going down the street, it's uh, five minutes from me. People don't look at, you know, driving around I'm gonna find a shop people look at it in a way where they say listen I'm gonna look at my computer what's the closest place to me after that the internet has provided them enough information to say what's the closest place that's the best place the star rating and this rating and that rating and so on and so forth meaning that the internet is no different than electricity just like you can't live without electricity you can't live without internet in most places in most houses in most lives but even this when it's misused can become dangerous if you have I had a friend that uh, used to have a business used to have this special technology to heat your floors special technology this I don't know uh, different types of um, uh, not uh, whatever special tech doesn't make a difference special technology to heat your floors special technology to heat your blanket special technology to heat your pillow special technology to heat anything you want wonderful obviously all of this depends on electricity and if I have a chair using this technology and I want to get nice and cozy in the freezing cold weather in Florida for the first time since I've been here in f- three years. Last few, last couple of weeks, it's freezing here. So I want a special warm chair, and I'm using this technology. But oh Hashem, I don't feel freezing anymore, right? But if there's a malfunction in the button, it's a malfunction in the button, and instead of, let's say, there being, I'm, for a hypothetical example, instead of there being 50 watts going, there's 5,000 watts. This just turned into an electric chair. <laughs> it's not, what do you mean? It's electricity. It's misused, it becomes a weapon. If it's misused, Rabotai, it becomes a weapon. The internet can help your business, can help even your marriage. How? Instead of your wife going out to see uh, Carlos and Stephen at the supermarket, she can shop on the internet instead, instead and not go out there to see all these strange people, excuse me, looking at like she's cattle. <laughs> I tell you myself, happiest days of my life is when my wife tells me, oh, I just shopped. Where? Online, never leave the house. Why? I don't want to go in anywhere. Because I know everybody looks in a certain way. That's just, that's just a reality. I tell my wife all the time, the less you leave the house, the better. The less I leave the house, the better. We have to, we have to leave. But nonetheless, if you don't have to, why? For what? So, the internet can help you. Why? Instead of going to the supermarket, you can press a few buttons and the the shopping comes to your house. Who's better than you? If instead of going to spend two hours at some toy store or at some clothing store, you can press two buttons and it comes to your house, why not? So this can help. But, Rabotai... If it's misused, it's a weapon. If the credit card becomes like a slot machine and she starts spending money like it's, like it's air, it becomes a weapon that creates shlombite problems. Even more so. Even more dangerous than money because money is paper at the end of the day. It's not even paper anymore. It's digital. 
if she decides to go on one of these social networks to become reconnected with our old school buddies and all of a sudden Steve from 1987 says oh hey Wilma how are you how you been how's everything how's everything how's it going how's it this how's it that oh you have two kids oh you have a husband wow great and all of a sudden she goes hey Husband David, how are you? Yeah, I just met Steve from high school from 20 years ago. Oh, who's Steve? Oh, you remember Steve? There's a whole thing, a conversation. And David is an idiot. He says, oh, yeah, you should reconnect. You should tell him to come over. You should tell Steve to come over. See what happens. See how is he doing. And little this idiot David realizes that Steve just came over, not because he cares about Steve. It's because maybe he's looking for a new girlfriend. He just let the wolf inside his inside, inside the house. Why? It's he let her have a boyfriend. Marbury, he's only my friend on Facebook. Now you guys think that I'm exaggerating. I know. I can tell you, I'm dealing right now, this second, with at least a half a dozen, a half a dozen, more, almost a dozen actually. Marriages that are on the brink of breaking. Why? Because of social media. All of them religious. So here's it. If it's secular, listen, secular people change uh, husbands and wives like underwear. You look at the celebrities, they're all married at least five times to be a celebrity. You can't be a celebrity without getting married five times. Until you're married five times, you're not a celebrity. You're like a second class uh, celebrity. Once you're married five times, oh, you're Hollywood. Okay, Baruch Hashem, you're welcome to Hollywood. You're welcome to Hollywood. Married five times. But in, in, a, in a religious world, it's, unaccept, it's unacceptable. I remember when I was a kid, divorce, hush for shalom, who gets divorced these days? What are you talking about? Divorce, don't even say such a word. It was a curse word when I was a kid. Saying divorce is like a curse word. What do you mean divorce? Who gets divorced? We'll die angry and not get divorced. Well, die angry and I get divorced. Who gets divorced? Today, <coughs> people change marriages like they change underwear. But this is not, ex this is not something you ex that's explainable without realizing where the source is. The source is, is that we forgot what our Torah said. Our Torah said that we have to have modesty. Modesty is not just your clothes. Modesty is also not just your speech. Modesty is also what kind of friend you have. Modesty is also what kind of friend you allow yourself to have. Modesty is your entire life. How you run your marriage. What kind of, what kind of life you're going to have. Now, when people feel like it's okay to have these platonic relationships... They're opening themselves up for a disaster. And right now, there's a few of the relationships that I'm trying to save are relationships that started not even on Facebook. You know, Facebook, you would think, you know, they, he sees her picture, she sees his picture, whatever. They start talking, socializing after a few months, boyfriend, girlfriend, even though he's married and she's married and his kids here and his kids here. They don't care. They'll break houses that way. People thought that Facebook was Satan himself. They don't realize that Satan's little brother. Satan's little brother. Why? Because it's obvious. It's obvious. He sees as a picture. She has a picture. Everyone knows. It's not. You try. You're still trying to hide. Where's the Satan himself? Text messaging. WhatsApp. Regular text. Why? You have these groups, and sometimes they're Torah groups. I have I don't know twenty five groups. 25 group, we spread Torah all day, but there's always a nochel, there's always some, some sleaze bag in the group, there's always a sleaze bag that goes into the group and looks at the directory of the group, looks at the numbers, and he starts texting different women, because it says the name of the woman, especially the women that, are, that, that don't realize how guys think, and they put their picture as a profile, so he sees a pretty picture, he sees a phone number, hey, I just got some digits, it's like, it's better than going to the bar. Hey, listen, I'm from the 80s. What can you tell you? I'm old. 
I just got number. I just got a number. How do you get a number? Doing nothing. You join a Torah group. Hey, look, Hashem sent me a shiduch. Hashem sent me a shiduch. This is the nochlim of today. You guys think that this is only from this balich? No, no. Let me tell you. There are people that pretend to be religious. They'll even tell you they learn in yeshiva. They even tell you they're going to learn in kolos. They tell you, oh no, I'm divorced with two, three kids, but she really hurt me, and she this, and she that, but I'm really a nice guy. Okay, if you're a nice guy, why are you talking to a married woman? If you're so religious, why are you talking to a married woman? Why? Don't you know that someone that goes with a married woman, there's no end to his suffering? No end. No end. Him and the Mechalel Shabbat are in the same place permanently. What happens permanently? Eventually, they get destroyed and just whatever Hashem put in there, take, he takes back. There is no tshuva for them in the next world. There's no Gilgul, there's no reincarnation, there's nothing. There's only suffering. If you're so religious, why are you doing it? But this is Yetzirah. Rabotai, today, you have to protect your wives and husbands more than you would protect anything else in life. Why? Because the amount of Yetzirah that's out there is mamash crazy. And that's why I was telling you, some of you, before this you, anyone that literally just wants to survive. I'm not talking about prosper. I'm not even talking about Olam Abba and you're with Moshe Rabbeinu and Rabbi Akiva and all of that. I'm talking about just simply survive and you're going to be okay when Mashiach comes or after 120. You have to be religious, but not the type of religious that's exterior only. Religious where you're working on your inside on a daily basis. Religious where you're fixing yourself on a daily basis because if not, you won't survive. There are plenty of so-called religious people that are making sins worse than any secular person I've ever met. Why? It all starts, some, they get Sarah sometimes starts on the internet, they go to these different pornographic websites, or they make certain phone calls, or they go to certain parties, and Hashem and Achim, what kind of stuff happens in the world, and unfortunately I have to deal with this stuff all the time. Why? Because after the disaster strikes, who do they call? Not Ghostbusters, it's me. <laughs> They call me with this stuff. Yeah, listen, I'm old. What can I tell you? I'm old. 